Here we go. The Lake Show. This is a this is a special team, man. This is a special team. Last year, they were 43 and 39, 7th in the West, and they were ultimately eliminated in the conference finals. They did make it all the way to the conference finals, but they eventually lost, well not even lost, they got swept by the eventual champions, Denver Nuggets. But overall, they had a W second half of the season. I mean, they started with Westbrook and all the failures and the injuries and everything. And then they made a bunch of trades. Got D'Angelo Russell, Austin Reeves came out, um, Jared Vanderbilt, and Rui. They had a few guys in this team who was hooping and they really, man, this off season looked, looked so good for the Lakers. It looked very, very good. And I still have my doubts, if I'm being honest. Looking at the depth chart, they have D'Angelo Russell, Austin Reeves, LeBron, Jared Vanderbilt, AD. That's probably going to be their starting five. And off the bench, Gabe Vincent, Max Christie, Torian Prince, Rui Hachimura, Christian Wood. And then Jalen Hachifino, Scotty Pippen Jr., Cam Reddish, Maxwell Lewis, and Jackson Hayes. And looking at that 15 man rotation, or that 15 man roster, honestly, that's really, really good. I really like at least like 14, 15, no, 14, 13 of the guys on that team. And I really like the way it's looking. There are questions I have though. First of all, let's start with the biggest name on this team, LeBron James. LeBron James has consistently been a top five player in the league for like the past 16, 7, literally my whole entire life. And even more, even maybe even longer than my whole entire life at this point. And he's, he's, he hasn't slowed down or at least showed that many signs of slowing down. I mean, he's not the same LeBron he was five years ago, but he still is LeBron James. And he's still going to do his best to give his all every night he goes on the floor. Just like he said in that I'm not retiring speech at the award show. So when you look at it from that standpoint, yeah, LeBron is looking amazing coming into the season. But then you also got to look at it as this man is about to turn 39 years old, I think. I think. 39. And year 21. Eventually, all this stuff is going to take a toll on him. Whether you like it or not, LeBron is going to slow down eventually. And it's really about, is this the year that he slows down? I don't know. Because it is LeBron James. It's really unpredictable. We don't know when he's going to slow down, when he's going to average 30. We don't know what's going to happen. But and I know I can't expect him to be horrible because it's LeBron James. But I can't also expect him to average 30 again because he's 39. So with LeBron, it's really, I don't know what we're going to get. It's LeBron James, but he's getting older. So at that point, at some point, we're going to have to accept that. And even though he's been running from father time for, it seems like forever, when some player is throwing down at 30, he's 39 and still going as a top 10 player in the league. Still got to look at him and be like, is, is it time to slow down, Bron? Like, is it coming soon? Is father time catching up to you yet? And we don't know. We'll see this season, but I'm not 100% sure about how his play will be. Next is Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis, <laughs> Anthony Davis, a day-to-day -day Davis, man. It is, it's, he's such a special player because years ago, people looked at him and people looked at Anthony Davis and they looked at Giannis and they saw those two as the future of the league because those two were pretty much on the same near MVP level and they were both young and they were both coming into their own as NBA superstars. And then both of them did go on to win championships in back-to-back -back years. Giannis went on to win two MVPs in the DPOI. The AD's been injured a lot. AD's injuries have been one huge reason the Lakers have been held back from success in the past few years. And if he stays healthy, AD is legit a top 10 player in the league, guaranteed. But it's, it, it's a big if. 
because his injury history is not amazing. It's not good at all. He It seems like he gets injured and he only plays like 60% of his games every year. But we were, it was good that we were able to see in the playoffs he was able to stay healthy, relatively healthy, and that he was, I'm pretty sure he actually might have played every game in the playoffs. I don't know for sure, but he was able to stay relatively healthy and he was able to help them get all the way to the conference finals. But there was, even in the playoffs, he, was, he wasn't the most consistent player because one day he would drop like 40, and the next day he'd have 11. So it was, it's, we don't know what to expect from Anthony Davis. That's the biggest thing. We don't know what to expect from these top two stars. LeBron, because of father time, will c- catch up to him eventually. And then AD because of injuries. Will he be able to stay healthy? And if if those two can overcome those, overcome those, I don't know, boundaries, I guess, then this team could definitely be a top, top, top team in the West. But it's a big if. It's a very big if. Now, looking at the rest of this team, Austin Reeves is has emerged as the third most reliable, or at least that's what he did emerge as last playoffs because he was the guy who was getting the ball in a lot of tough situations and he was coming through, man. He was clutching up. He was doing his thing last year in the playoffs. And now he's looked at as one of the best players on this team. And I, I like Austin Reeves, but I'm still not completely sure how confident I am in his play. Because, yes, he did amazing in the playoffs, but sometimes players have a tendency to show up in the playoffs, do amazing, and next season everybody expects a lot from them, and they don't meet those expectations. And that's especially likely to happen when you're in a city like Los Angeles, where the bright lights are all shining on you, and there's a lot of pressure that comes with being a part of the Los Angeles Lakers. They're one of the biggest franchises in NBA history. Might be the biggest franchise in NBA history, considering all the winning, all the, the just the big market, everything, man. So Austin Reeves definitely will have a lot of pressure on him coming into the season to be that solidified third option. Because a lot of the times in the playoffs last year, there would be LeBron and there would be Anthony Davis about half the time. And then there's it'd be kind of iffy, like, who was that third guy who would come through and help out? And you'd look to say, oh, that's Austin Reeves. But you can't forget, Austin Reeves has, he has been playing amazing recently. We just got to see, can he keep that up for the next 82-game season? And if the answer to that question is yes, then bet, 100%, I'm down. This team is amazing. But then again... It's a big if because I don't know how consistent Austin Reeves is going to be. So that's another if. Every single player on this team has an if, man. Austin Reeves. I I put here Reeves jump because some people think Reeves is going to jump up and become an all-star caliber player. I don't think he's going to be an all-star, especially in the West when you have Steph Curry, Anthony Edwards, Luka Doncic, John Mur- Well, John Murray might be out for a long time, but... You have a lot of guys hogging that. Shea, De'Aaron Fox, you have a lot of guys hogging that guard spot. So Austin Reeves most likely isn't gonna be an all-star. But yeah, if he can at least be a solid third option for this team behind LeBron and AD, and then if any of them gets injured, then he can emerge and just be the leader, not really leader, but be a really good player for this team, then that's all you really would ask for for from him because that's really what you need you don't need him to be a superstar you just need him to be consistent and just a good player and if he can do that bet. and then you look at the rest of this team you have d'angelo russell who has been shopped around in some trade offers but when he's good he's good when he's not as good he's not as good we, I saw in the play, we saw in the playoffs a few times last year that he wouldn't show up on some nights and he would be a little inefficient. And there was that interview where he was like, where, 
And he's like, I'm not a point guard. Stop calling me a point guard. I'm a basketball player. I thought that was kind of funny. But <laughs> yeah, D'Angelo Russell, if he could just be, because him and Austin Reeves, I see them kind of on the same level as of NBA player. I mean, a lot of people think that Austin Reeves is on the level of Jordan Poole, Tyler Hero, all those guys. I'm not exactly thinking he's up there yet, but I think D'Angelo Russell is like Austin Reeves, a guy who really just needs to come to the clutch when he's supposed to. When LeBron and AD are doing their part just to be that third, fourth option, D'Angelo Russell can do that and also help facilitate the offense because as much as he wants to decline it, he is a point guard. And even though you have LeBron, who is a great playmaker, you do need a guy to take some of the responsibility handling the ball and managing the team's offense. So if DeAndre Russell can do that, this team got it, man. This team got it. And then there's the refs. I, I, I said that like a minute ago, but I did really, of course, if you look at this team's free agent, or just not even just free agency, this whole off season, it's been amazing. They brought in Gabe Vincent, who just made the finals on a Heat team and did his thing, and now he can come to the Lakers. The only thing I have with Gabe Vincent is can he be consistent? Because in the Heat, he wasn't exactly the most consistent player. I mean, he came in the clutch when it mattered most, but during the season, a full 82 game season, can he continue to do that consistently? I don't think the answer to that question is yes, but I think he can at least come in the clutch when you need him. And if that's all you're asking for from him, 100% that's a W. I just don't think he would be good for a starting point guard role on a championship team because that is that position demands a lot more, especially to handle the ball and control the game, really. I mean, you have LeBron who can do that, but still it would take a good amount of responsibility, and that's the responsibility D'Angelo Russell has to take. And I think D'Angelo Russell can take that, especially considering he's been a former all-star, but can Gabe Vincent do that? No. I do think that he can be a really good player off the bench for this Lakers team, though. And that's why I honestly see this as a good signing. He can do what he needs to do every whenever the team needs him come through, and that's all he needs to do. And if he could do that, I mean, I don't expect him to be completely consistent, but if he could just come in the clutch when he needs to, that's all you really need from him. And then you have Torian Prince, who was another free agency signing. I mean, don't expect much from him. Play defense, hit a three every once in a while. Rui Hachimura is a guy who I saw working, like he, I've seen a lot from him. He was amazing last year in the playoffs, having some 20 point games and doing his thing. And he was working a lot with LeBron in the gym this off season. And if he can come to the season and be a just really good option scoring off the bench and maybe even play some defense as well. Sure, that's all you really need from him. He spent a, the beginning, like the first, what, three, four years of his career in Washington where he wasn't really doing much. And now he got an opportunity to play for a winning team. And I liked Rui when he was in Washington. Now moving to the Lakers and he can do his thing on the big stage. I really like that for him, man. So. Seeing Rui in this opportunity is really a good thing. I just love, you'll love to see it. And I hope he can succeed, do his part. And then there's Christian Wood and Jackson Hayes. Those two, I'll just talk about them both because they're really the center core of this team aside from AD. Christian Wood is an interesting player because the idea of Christian Wood is amazing. From when he broke out with the Pistons, to when he got traded to the Rockets and he was cooking and then when he or was it signed traded I can't remember but and then when he went to the Mavericks and wasn't doing that well coming off the I mean he came off the bench and he was decent but yeah I mean off the bench in this role I think he can be good but I don't expect too much from I just expect him to do his part because we've seen years where he's averaged like 16, 18 points a game. And we know he can do that, but he doesn't have to do that because you have LeBron, you have Austin Reeves, you have AD, you have DeAndre Russell, you have guys on this team who are gonna score the ball. You just need to do your part. So if Christian Wood can do that, sure. But 
I don't know, man. The fit is interesting. I think he should be good, though, because... Well, I don't know. I like Jackson Hayes' fit a lot more, to be honest, because you already have some scores on this team. You do need a guy who can help do the other things, like rebound and play in defense. And that's a guy like Jackson Hayes. Jackson Hayes is a guy who could do that. I mean, another guy who spent the beginning of his career on a losing team and then now he's getting an opportunity to play winning basketball. And I like the opportunity for him, man. I'm hoping he can succeed and I'm hoping he can do his thing. And then you have the very end of the bench, guys. Jalen Hitchafino is a guy who I scouted when I was doing my mock draft, so I mean, I might, I might, I might as well. I might as well. He's a guy I actually really liked in the draft class, and I think he was a really good pick for the Lakers. I don't think I put him in my mock draft, but I had him going in like the top 16, 15 picks. I think I might have had him going to the Hawks, but I can't remember completely. Guard from Indiana, 6'4", 217 pounds, 20 years old. My comparisons for him, a Michael Carter-Williams or a taller, less shooting Kemba. Crazy comparison for Kemba, but Michael Carter-Williams is pretty accurate, especially considering the size. I mean, he's not as tall as Michael Carter-Williams, but he's still 6'4", which is taller than Norm point guard. Slightly taller than Norm point guard. Especially nowadays, that might actually be an average height for a point guard, but I don't know. Anyways, very good ball handler. He can change speeds very well, like Kemba. Great finisher, good size for a guard, pretty good mid-range, works great in the pick and roll, can work his way through the defense, decent three-point shot, draws the defense towards him, very good at finding open guys, a great passer, good core vision, long arms and good hands on defense, and he can anticipate passes. The only unknowns for him were, he only averaged three assists in college, which was a little troubling to me, especially considering he was playing the point guard role. So I was like, eh, I don't know about that. Can he shoot consistently? Because his shot, I said it was decent, but I didn't say it was exactly good. If he can shoot consistently good, he does help this Lakers team a lot more. But I don't think this team really needs shooting because they already have a good amount of good shooters. So if he could just do the other things, he's good. And then I said also a little too jumpy on defense. And I mean, that could be good sometimes, but also for a team in crucial moments, being jumpy on defense can sell the whole game. So I guess from that standpoint, it's not the greatest, but I did really overall like the pick because he's a guy who can come in and affect, really contribute to winning basketball. And because you already got guys, Gabe Vincent, Rui Hachimura, Christian Wood, you got guys here who can score. You need a guy to help facilitate all of that off the bench. And Jalen Hitchfino can do that. He can he can change speeds, he can draw the defense in towards him and then kick out, get the shooters. Because there's a lot of good shooters on this team. So, and then Cam Reddish even. <laughs> I mean, Cam Reddish, top 10 pick, what, three, four years ago now. <laughs> he hasn't done much since then, but if you can come in this Lakers team and hit some threes, I don't know, man. I mean, maybe. But yeah, Jalen Hitchfino is a really good pick. I liked him for the Lakers. And this team, the only questions are really injuries and also inconsistency. Actually, no, that's not even true because I mentioned so many ifs in this video. This video was full of ifs. That might be the title, this team full of ifs. But... There's so many questions about this team. If they can answer all those questions correctly and know what they're doing and do it consistently from the start of the year, instead of waiting until halfway through the year to start picking it up like they did last year, then maybe they got it, man. Maybe then they can actually be a lot better than they were last year and they could actually have be one of the top teams in the West. This team, I like it. It has very high, a very high ceiling, but also a very low floor because it's the Lakers. They're not always gonna be consistent. You don't know what to expect at this point. We'll see what happens. The team overall looks good, but I'm not 100% confident in their abilities. This is a 20 minute video.
it's probably less than a 20 minute video for y'all, but I've been recording this for 20 minutes. Oh my goodness. Thank you for watching this. Tell me what you think down below in the comments about the Lakers. I definitely, like this team is definitely one of the more interesting teams in the league to think about. And we'll see what happens come the season. Their first game is the first game of the year against the Nuggets. So we'll see. But I can, I actually can't wait, man. This is going to be fun. This is going to be very, very fun. I'll see you guys next time. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment down below any tips, tricks, or topics you have me to talk about on this channel. And turn on, turn on notifications so you get notified about each new video I upload. I'll see you guys next time. I'm out.